last video was the one paint can stove. Today I've got the XL or extra long version. This is the two paint can stove. Now a lot of you I'm sure are just groaning like really? But I thought just for fun I would put this one together and, uh, and just see how it worked. So almost exactly the same as the other one. I have added some a little improvements for you. Uh, a lot of you wanted to catch on the door. So instead of trying to bend the handle, a lot of you suggested that. Uh, there was some suggestion of magnets. I looked around for those. In the end, I opted for a kind of simple solution. Uh, I put a wing nut here, and there were a couple of you that suggested the wing nut as well. So, so that's the one that I went with. Basically, uh, a quick quarter turn there, and that door stays closed. The other thing that uh, was kind of a concern to a lot of you was uh, air vents in the front. So essentially what I did is I drilled uh, three holes there, uh, cut a little bit of uh, material that happened to be bent into a... Uh, an L shape there so it gives me a little bit of a handle on it but I can with one screw or bolt I can go up and down with the volt uh, <laughs> the air holes and regulate the amount of air going in there um, legs are exactly the same as the other one uh, four inch bolts drilled in from the inside with a, a nut on the bottom them, holding them there uh, if you're looking for materials make sure you get bolts that are threaded all the way to the top so that you can fasten them there. This is just a little bit of strapping I picked up in the furnace uh, duct section. You can buy one inch strapping that's about 17 inches long. So just uh, cut one of those pieces in half and use those to stabilize the legs. Now I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how the heck did I join these two things together. There's no hardware on the outside so obviously I did it from the inside. So essentially what I did, I'll just show you the, uh, the front. I don't know if you're going to be able to see all the way in. Uh, I, I cut a hole similar to this one into the back of the front can and also into the lid of the back can. And you see a little bit of extra meat here on the four sides. I basically just bolted them together, quarter inch bolts with wing nuts. And, uh, and then once I had it kind of completely aligned, I just trimmed out the little bit of ex excess to try and open up the inside as much as possible. So it's, there is a little bit of a, a ridge or lip in there. I don't know if you can see that in the back, but that's what I'm going to have to live with. In this case, I opened up the door a little bit more than the last one to get a little bit bigger piece of wood. And of course, being twice as long, I could almost get uh, a piece of a log that's twice as long inside of this one. So of course, uh, rather than drilling holes for the, the, the back legs in the front can, I didn't drill any holes here. And I drilled holes in the, in the back can for the rear legs. And with four bolts holding the two together there's good rigidity here uh, of course uh, putting the pipe in the top a lot of you had questions about that and this piece of three inch pipe I call this the corrugated side it's the the wiggly side it just fits in into, into the round hole sort of snugly another question or comment that a lot of you had well there's some air gaps here what about those isn't the smoke gonna come out of there uh, but truthfully and I've built a lot of these stoves the smoke goes up the big hole in the middle. I'm curious to see how this thing burns. If I put a, a longer piece of wood in there, whether there's gonna be enough draw from the air holes in the front to take that fire and, uh, and send the, uh, the smoke out the top. By the way, this one, I do have a damper. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, that was another thing that everybody thought I should have. I've never used them in the past, these little stoves. Um, you know, maybe, maybe they work better, maybe they don't. I'm gonna find out on this one. Okay, so I think I'm set up for the burn test here. I'll just show you something before I put some wood in there. Whenever I build these little wood stoves, I always put a piece of chicken wire in the bottom of the stove. Just give it a little bit of a bend so that it sits uh, about half an inch off of the bottom. And this does two things. It promotes airflow underneath your fire and also protects the bottom of your stove from burn through. Uh, just something that I've always done seems to work quite well. Okay, so I've got a little bit of wood in the stove there. Just go ahead and add a little bit of flame to that. Just using a piece of fat wood here. Always like to have a piece of that along with me. Makes getting a fire going a little bit easier, especially in these wood stoves. You gotta reach in. Of course, a lot of times, uh, depending on the conditions, you're not gonna get dry tinder. So as long as you can find a little bit of dry wood, you can 
get your fire to spark up fairly quickly with a little bit of fat. 